It was actually a very, very nice howl. I did get lucky. We can carry on and do some of the howling playbacks and see if we can hear some other groups respond. Well, we have a point that's about 300 meters from where we are. So we play the sound of howl. And because canids are territorial, when they hear the sound of another one, they'll respond to it. And we can use that to estimate the population size. We played the howl three times and we got two responses, which is very unusual. Our average is about 1 in 20. At this point, I don't know how big their territories are, so that's part of what this is for, is to find out uh, what kind of area they need and what kind of habitat we're finding them in. With the howling, there's that connection where you can hear them responding to you and you know that they're right there. That's, I think, the most rewarding part. The African golden wolf is a newly discovered species that is still new to science. So population sizes right now aren't known, but it's thought that across their entire range in Africa, they're declining. In Morocco, they've declined quite dramatically. So finding out population sizes is a big priority. We're in Ifran National Park in the Middle Atlas Mountains of Morocco in North Africa. The wolves are living in this mountainous forest environment where they haven't really been studied. Uh, Ifran National Park was created in 2004, mainly protect the atlas cedar that are found here, as well as the Barbie macaques. All of this cedar and oak, mixed cedar for it. And there is many family living around here, of monkeys and wolves too. This here. Maybe the mic is over there. We listen. Maybe we can hear the voice of uh, monkeys. There's only about 10,000 Barbie macaques that exist. Uh, they are endangered and they're located in several isolated populations. I first started with the monkeys, which can serve as an umbrella species. Protecting and conserving these monkeys protects the entire forest. So the same motivation is for the wolves as well. So I'm interested in the wolves themselves being a new species. There's, there's a lot that we can learn about them, but also protecting the last large carnivore that's left in these forests is important for the entire ecosystem. The greatest threat facing the African golden wolves is human conflict, so being killed by humans in response to their livestock being attacked. We went with Dress for a day to see how he manages his flock to understand what it's like for him. These shepherds leave their house early in the morning, just after sunrise. They go out and spend the entire day walking with their sheep, going through the mountains, uh, finding a pasture uh, they might spend some time resting there, and they do this every single day, all day long. So what we've been walking through is uh, just going into the national park, and I think this is the boundary here. So people live in the park possibly for generations. People have the right to graze their livestock in the park, and that's where we see issues between the wolves and the shepherds where we see that the wolves are occasionally attacking and killing livestock. This time of year is one of the worst for wolf attacks. One sheep costs approximately $300, so even if they lose one sheep a year, that's a quite large economic impact on them. So one of the goals of the Atlas Golden Wolf Project is to understand issues of conflict between people and wildlife and carnivores here in particular. So that is one of the questions we ask in the interview. Um, so some people will say, when we ask them, do you think that wolves or foxes or 
bore should be protected or removed. A lot of people say just removed, but some people will say something like, I don't want them to be gone, I just don't want them to cause me problems. So you get this entire range of people just wanting them completely gone. And then some people recognizing that, you know, maybe they shouldn't all be gone, but there needs to be some kind of solution so they don't cause humans problems. So the wolf came from here sleeping slowly, tan, tan, hmm. tan. he was hiding there without making any noise or anything. So we've conducted over 200 interviews with shepherds to try and understand their attitudes towards wildlife, their uh, husbandry practices and precautions that they take against wolves. So I asked him about this picture of two wolves and he told me these are wolves, these are our enemies. Yes. Um, so we're also just wondering what is your attitude towards wolves? What do you think of them and how do you feel living with them? So he told me they are living animals too, so yeah. So it's just part of part of the part of nature and nature, part of his job. Yeah. The work that I've been doing with monkeys here has changed my outlook on conservation and, and the successes that you can have. So we've seen a big improvement in people's attitudes and and population as well. So with the wolves, it's all still quite new and there's a lot of problems of conflict and very negative attitudes from the shepherds towards these wolves. But I do have hope that in a few more years with work on this that we can improve the situation and improve people's attitudes and help the population here as well.